Hello and welcome to Season 2 of Behind the Music Desk. We're back after our little holiday intercession and we are talking about some stuff that you just heard on the 7 o'clock news as well as the latest ads to ERS. We're on the menu tonight, we're looking at Temples, um, New Mac DeMarco, and we're going to start off talking about the latest from Cold War Kids. Yeah, um, so the new song is called Love is Mystical. It's from their sixth studio album, L.A. Divine. And uh, it's about mystical love, that's so that, that sums yeah, uh, the album's coming out April seventh. Also, just fun fact, um, and yeah, the whole album's about LA, I guess. So it's kind of about the mysticism of LA yeah. and and the the weird vibes of like the night. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just we were just listening to the song and, and t um, talking about like. Cold War Kids could potentially be sort of filling the niche left by Keen. Um, I don't think anyone could fill the massive hole in your heart left by Keen. But, but they yeah, come they've close. Pretty, pretty stable, like, del like keep delivering uh, mid, um, upper mid-sized indie band. You know, it so yeah, sounds like no, a song in house, but yeah. And I, he has I, that like clear voice. It's the mm -hmm. ring in his voice that yes. really makes him comparable to Keen. That's what mm -hmm. sets him over the edge in terms of the Keen and up there in yeah. terms of Keen. That's what does it. Yeah, you wouldn't Legacy. necessarily think of it, but Nathan Willett has a killer, killer range. He does. But he does. It's incredible. Yeah. It's um, stuff. Speaking of awesome, awesome <laughs> voices, um, we're yeah. yep. shifting to talking about Methyl Ethel. They had the second song on tonight's 7 o'clock news. Um, it's called Ubu, and it is off of their upcoming album, Everything is Forgotten. Um, Ubu, it's the title of a surrealist play, Ubu Roy, um, and which explains the haircut line and the general sort of nonsense in the whole song. Um, his Ubu is just a nonsense word. It means actually nothing. That's um, but interesting. What a, I thought it did what a fun song. It, it's a bastardization of the French name for Herbert. Oh, oh wow. That's, that's very intense, and I love it. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, the words in the chorus kind of sound like percussion, which I think is really cool. If you listen mm. to it, it kind of sounds like... Like that kind of like sound. Yeah. It sounds like production. Different, yeah, it's really, you can just kind of get lost in the song, I think, in all the production and the overlaying aspect. And yeah. then the refrain, obviously, it's just like over and over, very, and over very again. Good. But it gets stuck in your head in a great way, I yeah. think. We all need to get a haircut. That's true. That's, That's a great so reminder. True. Yep. I do. That <laughs> thing <laughs> 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 Don't forget. Wow. Learn something new. All right. Next song is uh, Mac DeMarco, My Old Man. Um, so, his album, new album, This Old Dog, is out May 5th. And uh, he wrote this album, well, he recorded the demo and then moved from New York to LA and then said uh, that uh, he had to revisit the songs and then change them because LA has a different vibe. Another album about LA. That's yeah. Because you gotta. Because LA just has like those it night vibes. You. It does. He it says it has a different vibe. It's it's interesting because I feel like a lot of people would associate his older music with that like relaxed yeah. LA surfer vibe, mm -hmm. but this one feels a lot like, truer, I think, to, to the atmosphere um, of LA. And it's a, the production is a lot cleaner, which is really interesting. I did not expect him to go in that direction at all, but it's cool to see him actually progress. I was kind of expecting him to yeah. just do the same thing for every album, so yeah. it's nice to see that progression. It's neat that there's zero. Electric guitar, and that's yeah. like the thing that's that's what he's become known for is that really it's very smartly crafted but really yeah. sloppy electric exactly. guitar play. Exactly, because he's a funny guy, he can so get he chiller, wants, apparently. He have, but he can get chiller, yeah. And it's really fun. And uh, no electric guitar in the album, he's like maybe all. one song I have it, but really, yeah, he's taken it, huh. taken it off completely. That'll be interesting to see how that like how that works live yeah. because a lot of his live band is built on the like electronic instrument like with electric guitar and all that so huh that's it's interesting. gonna be cool and 11 out of 13 of the songs will be will have like they will just be instrumentals of those songs which is crazy oh like the yeah the album is yeah. um Will be, he's releasing instrumental tracks yes. on most That's of the right. album, yes. along with it, which is sort of what he did with um, some other stuff. True. That was yeah, he's done a lot of covers of his old songs, of, like just in instrumental form. It's really interesting. Yeah. Fun cool. Movie. Okay, I guess moving on to the last song for Muse this week, uh, we have Blondie Fun, and this is her 11th album out May 5th. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and it's written, the song Fun is written by TV on the radio's Dave Sitek. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yes, but yes. yes. Dave Sitek, yeah. excellent producer, songwriter, does a lot yeah. of work outside of the band. Yeah, and they brought on um, John Congleton, who produced Parallel Lines also, mm -hmm. so that was really cool, kind of a nice throwback to the earlier sound. 
but they're definitely progressing. Like they, they're embracing, I think, a lot of newer artists and songs because yes. they're doing the collaboration with Blood Orange and Sia and Charlie XCX, Joan Jett, who is older, obviously. But yeah. but they, yeah, so it's a nice blending of their older sound and embracing newer, too. The new album is called Pollinator. Yeah. Uh, the next song that we were adding this week was uh, Temples, uh, Stranger or Be Forgotten, which is about the sort of uh, societal pressure to either be like interesting, like different, unique, or nothing. Or buy. Mm -hmm. You gotta yeah, be weird just, or yeah, get exactly. out. <laughs> and I think that that's a very interesting like idea, especially in art. There, there's a pressure to make every song be like, something needs to be jarring mm -hmm. in order for it to like, mm -hmm be engaging. And that's what they did with their first single too. So it's cool to see the the different um, feelings of the, of the songs. This one I guess harkens back to their first album a lot more I think than their first single mm -hmm. did. But it, yeah, it's so, so it's kind of weird to see because their first single was so weird and mm -hmm. then they're talking about like you have to be weird or else like who cares? Look, man, yeah. we had to. <laughs> we had to do it. Like, Sorry guys, yeah. we gotta. <laughs> but it's also working in their favorite because they're moving away from like you their first album, Sun Structures, you used to be able to talk about Temples in reference to a lot of other Chile, bands. Like, Chile, yeah. Yeah. Came, you know, Temples is this part Pink Floyd, this part Tame Impala, yeah. this part Oasis, and now they're really, they're not really sounding quite like anybody else on, mm -hmm. on Stranger Be Forgotten. Come to their own. Volcano is out March 3rd. And that's the end of, um, that's the end of Behind the Music Desk. We'll be back same time next week, um, just after the 7 o'clock news, we'll talk about new stuff airing on ERS and those special little songs that you only hear at 7 on Tuesdays. Um, peace. Peace. <laughs>